so much for joining us. This is the EPR Women's Network Seminar, and this is the March webinar. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. We love to have you here. And if you are a part of EPR already or have heard about EPR before, you are certainly welcome. Today, we are going to be talking about building your brand, leveraging social media for success. Um, and we just want to um, let you know what to expect. With each and every EPR Women's Network webinar, you can expect key principles for whatever topic that we share. You can learn and understand and learn how to leverage impactful tools, tips, tools, um, and most importantly, we want to hear from you. EPR Women's Network is truly a network of women who are there to help and encourage and empower each other to success. So um, usually we'll go through case studies or moments of interaction, all designed to make sure that we hear from you and we know exactly what you're going through and how to help you. And today is no different. We are so excited because we have one of the experts. Um, she's actually one of us. She's a member of EPR. And Aramide Abe is her name. You have heard of her, I am sure. Um, she's an international superstar all the way from Nigeria, but she's actually currently in the UK. She literally just walked off of stage teaching multiple people um, the very same topic that she's going to be sharing today. So Aramide, without further ado, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much, Chichi. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. Um, can I go ahead? Absolutely. Okay. I was just posting on social media to, for people to know, obviously, as a social media person. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, as Chichi has mentioned, I am, I'll say my specialty is content and social media, but I'll talk a bit about myself. Um, but before I do that, I will share, um, can we just see the next slide? Just to give some overview. Um, in terms of what we're going to share today is like an introduction as to social media for a business or work, whatever you do. And then um, the second thing is, um, the second segment is more an experiential type of teaching, which I find is the best way um, in terms of some of the lessons that we've learned in our organization. And then talking about social media strategy, because I know a lot of people, um, they, they use social media actively, but then they may not necessarily know the most strategic approach. So I think that's gonna be one of the core things we're going to focus on. Um, but, be, but before I go on, can I get a sense of, um, I think we're about to run a poll on who, you know, who here runs a business versus who here works nine to five versus anything else. How can we get that information? Is it displayed or do people vote? Ah, great, I see it. So we have a poll here, which asks you, so please all, can we all engage? It says, what do you do for a living? So are you a nine to five career woman? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you run a nonprofit or work in a nonprofit or do something else? So whatever that is, please select and then we can see your answers. And the reason I ask this is because it gives a sense of sort of, you know, the, the spread and, you know, the weighting of the participants. So it also helps me tailor and use specific examples when I'm sharing and teaching. So that's the reason why I ask this. So please answer. I'm going to, I'm going to choose mine as well, which is entrepreneur. Oh, okay. So do I wait a minute or how do we see the results? I think I see. Okay, so Devs has said, oh, some people are nine to fivers and entrepreneurs. Awesome. <laughs> Side hustle. You know what that's like. Um, so we have, okay, so we have three people entrepreneurs, one people in a nine to five exclusively, one person nine to five an entrepreneur, and then some people have other. So if you're other, can you put what you do in the chat box? Because that helps. Someone does all, wow. Nine to five, entrepreneur, nonprofits. That's a superwoman. And then, you know, we have some, but someone says both, honestly. <laughs> so yes, I, I imagine that a lot of us have businesses. Um, I, I, I'm guessing that most of us on this call are African descent in one way or the other. And so we find that a lot of us have, especially women have, always have something we're doing because we're entrepreneurial, just in the way we're wired. So I can understand that. And the good thing is this, um, teaching is all around social media for business. And so um, without further ado, I'll go on to the next slide, Chichi, if you, if you will, please. 
Okay, so I'm going to introduce myself still, but I still want to just share the goals um, of this session. So the first is definitely to shift your mindset as to the power, reach, and impact of social media when it comes to business. The second is to equip you with tools and techniques that will make you social media business savvy. And then finally, to address questions that you probably will have regarding social media. So there will be a good portion of this um, call left for questions because I imagine, you know, quite a few of us have one question or the other, has one question or the other. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about myself, but to give you an overview of how I sort of arrived um, in this space that I'm in now. And what I say is I, I'll call myself a content person, essentially, or a media entrepreneur. Um, I've used social media to grow a startup community, an entrepreneurship community called Niger Startups. And we have close to 68,000 68, followers call them members sometimes because majority of them are entrepreneurs. So we engage with them predominantly through social media. And through that, we've grown the community even offline um, and we've formed strategic relationships through that. We've, we've done a lot <laughs> using social media, um, but my background is predominantly technology. I started off um, sort of like working in IT after graduating with a computer science degree. Um, and then I ended up in marketing, which I had a flair for. So marketing, PR, that's sort of my thing when I'm not social media-ing. Um, and then I went on to do my MBA. So post-MBA, naturally, I wanted to work in a bank, to, to work in a very corporate environment. And I did that across Africa, working, um, leading strategy in a, in a Pan-African bank. And then after that was when I started Niger Startups. And um, the way it started, it didn't start as... A social media platform or anything like that. It actually started as a business directory because I was trying to address a problem that I found, which was access to information for people like you, me, who's trying to find out something useful for their business. And I was struggling to find that out. But because I felt like I had a good network, I could find out that information. But then I thought about all the other people who look for things and can't find it and how we can create a community that, where we can share information. So literally it started that way. And I thought, okay, let me leverage social media to test this or validate this hypothesis of, okay, um, I can grow and gather data by advertising businesses for free on social media. So it was a weird sort of like thing and started that, started sharing business information and in exchange for their data. So I'll say, okay, we'll, we'll publish your logo or whatever for free and then we'll collect your information. And lo and behold, we started doing that. And people will share their information just to get, you know, free adverts or whatnot. So it was like a freemium sort of model, but I won't go into too much technicality there. Um, and it seemed to work. But of course, because that wasn't necessarily the foundation of it, there was a lot of listening that we were doing just to get a sense of what people were looking for. And very quickly, this whole business director idea sort of changed. So I'll move on to the next slide, please. So I don't <laughs> bore you too much about myself, but what I'm going to sort of share is some of the learnings that we learned, um, some of the lessons we learned um, and how that made us better with social media even. So yeah, so now we've sort of arrived at who we are and we, we call ourselves or term ourselves um, a virtual sector and stage agnostic um, startup accelerator in a sense and community. And our mission is to really empower business owners or entrepreneurs to build sustainable business through this access of information, through this community and all the value added things that we do, which I'll share. Um, and through that, we've been gaining recognition and a strong voice in the SME space because it's no more just, okay, posting on social media. It's being invited to certain platforms to share and even contribute because of our presence and our um, numbers in terms of SMEs and insights that we have. So that's the benefit that this has helped us and accorded us. And I'm sure for some of you, um, you know, you probably are building communities or gathering people or women, you know, for one thing or the other. So some of the insights here would, I hope, would hopefully help you um, as regards that. So if you have any questions, please um, note them down and you can always um, um, copy and paste them into the chat box. So then, you know, we can look at them at the end of the call or even you know prior to the end of the call so please um type your questions up whenever that's the beauty about a webinar where you can you can like you don't have to keep your questions to the end in your head you can literally like ask them on the chat box so please do so okay next slide please um and then i think i have i don't know if i have a timekeeper but i'll be happy if chichi 
lets me know how many minutes I have when I have 15 minutes left. Okay, so I've sort of spoken about uh, offline activities in terms of now being like being um, an entity that engages and empowers entrepreneurs in person, even though we started on social media. So that's the beauty about it. So through this, we've had um, collaborations and strategic partnerships with Google, with Facebook and Microsoft, as you can see, some of them are the training sessions that we've had, um, you know, um, mixers, networking, um, conferences, panel events, um, activities for entrepreneurs. So we've built a community, literally, an in-person community from a virtual space, which is amazing. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, so, 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 you know, prior to building this, because it's, it's, it, this is an abridged version of an entire product that I now have. It's called Accelerate Your Business on Social Media. And I was preparing um, for this last year, this product, this, you know, this presentation. And I was thinking, okay, how do I teach people about social media? But um, the impression I got was to share the learnings and the failings that we had as a means of engaging and educating people as opposed to using the textbook definitions and all of that. Theory is very good, but then I think the experience is always even better. So I'll start with some of our successes and then as opposed to calling it failings, I call it lessons learned. So um, in terms of successes, and we're going into teaching mode now or learning mode, um, one thing we did well at Niger Startups was we used effective tactics. You know that um, things like inspiration always work. So um, inspiring people, when people wake up in the morning, the first thing they want to do is just check their social media and then, you know, they find something inspiring or they share it or they save it. So definitely, even though maybe you have a very, um, you know, you might have a, an, uh, you might be in an organization that isn't necessarily a creative type organization, but I still think you can use um, inspirational content. It's very, very useful. Um, the second would be education, educative content, because then you're seen as a thought leader. So as opposed to just inspiring and sharing quotes, you can begin to teach people things. So if you, you know, if you, um, let's see, if you do events, for example, for a business, you can start to educate people with regards to one segment of event planning. And then, you know, that's a good way to distinguish, distinguish yourself from the next person who's doing events, for example, and is on social media, because then people begin to, you begin to build that trust and loyalty. People see you as a thought leader. People always want to learn. And so on social media, you find that even the posts that teach people have the most and highest engagement. And that's what we found. So even now we're doing more of that because it's quite cyclical. The beauty of our social media is you can gather insights almost immediately. So we're learning what works every day and what doesn't work. And definitely um, edu education works. So the third thing is um, giveaways and promotions. I think even on our page this morning, we had something around give giveaways. So the beauty about giveaways is you can really build a, a, uh, an audience. And I think that's how we started, where we were sharing or advertising, publishing logos for free. So that's some sort of giveaway. Um, and then we did other giveaways as well. But then it has its downsides, and I'll talk about that in the lessons learned, but giveaways and promotions, if they're done strategically, are another good way to engage, to grow, you know? So it's not only growing a followership as well, you need to also think about engagement because you can have a million followers and have like very few likes and that happens a lot. So it's not just um, numbers, it's also engagement. And that's how you know whether your brand is powerful enough to stare things or, you know, um, change, um, change mindsets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then another thing we did well was we, okay, I'm jumping. So the freemium model, I mentioned that before. So similar to LinkedIn where you, um, the, the, the basis of what you offer is free. So you can, we can all sign on to LinkedIn and use the basic services for free. But then if you want to do additional things like, um, you know, see who's viewed your profile, contact people who are in the fourth degree or third degree from you, then you need to pay. And so that's the model we're employing here as well, where, you know, the basic stuff, you know, now you can sort of, you know, advertise or get your logo out there for free. But if you want some other things or other services, then you pay. So that's the, the model we employed and it seemed to work and it's still working. Um, and then we also form strategic partnerships. So we partner with Google and that definitely helped our brand, you know, in terms of the rubber stamp, and then the in-person presence that we wanted to have as well. So, um, you know, 
would say definitely look out for those types of things and don't shy away from partnering. Obviously, it has to be strategic, but then it's a good good way to lift your brand up, especially when it's a known, established brand and they're trying to, you know, bring you on board to provide one service or the other or one offering or the other. And then finally, we net leverage networks, relationships, people we knew to push and just promote or maybe have a webinar, have someone speak, et cetera, et cetera. So those were some of the successes that, that definitely helped us as a business on social media. Um, in terms of the lessons learned though, something that we didn't do too well was having a clear cut um, social media strategy from the start. I think I missed out strategy there. So have a clear cut strategy from the start. We didn't because if you recall, we were trying to be a, a former directory. And I think the reason why I had researched this whole directory thing and thought, okay, so a directory is a bit flat, number one, but number two, you would have to sort of invest a lot of money in canvassers to go out and gather data. Alternatively, you can use social media to gather data. That's how we veered into social media. But then we didn't have a strategy for social media. So we did this, we did that, you know, we did giveaways today, we did features tomorrow. It was very just kind of ad hoc. Um, sometimes we'd have some loose plan in place, but in general, it was a bit too ad hoc and it didn't help. So um, I would always say have a clear cut strategy and it doesn't have to be too complex. I think one of the next few slides, we actually look at what a strategy is, which is good. Um, one other thing that we did not do, and I find a lot of women in business or people in business do this, we tend to coast. So you might have, you might achieve one milestone and then you kind of just, I don't want to say wallow, but you kind of remain in that, the victory of it for some time. You know, you're not pivoting, you're not going on to the next level. Like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? So I'm sure like, you know, we were happy with our numbers and our engagement, some of the Google stuff, but then we weren't looking at, okay, so what's the next thing we need to do to be pushing boundaries? Because for example, we never foresaw the algorithm and that hit us. And I'll talk about that. Um, but if we were pivoting like at, at intervals and periods, then would have made sort of like, what's the word now, allocation or a buffer for something on Instagram algorithm when it came and it really hit us. And I'll give you some, some very perfect practical examples about that. Um, and then, so then we, we also exhausted the free and the freemium. So too many giveaways, I would say, I would say, don't, don't do too many giveaways. You know, you should be strategic about them because the next thing people just see your brand as, some kind of free brand and you're offering real value so when you're not about to put a price on something people don't they don't value it to the extent you know they don't value the amount because they just see you as free whereas they'll give the next person x dollars because right from the get-go you know they were clear about what they wanted to offer that was free and what wasn't so i'll say don't don't exhaust the free in freemium freemium is good but don't exhaust the free um, and then the third thing what we didn't have at the time was a content team that was structured. So there was a time where, because it was me mainly running it, once or twice I would have like an admin person support me, but not all the time. So there was a time, a stretch, I didn't have anyone managing it. And I, you know, I was thinking I was traveling and in another country and going through my own personal sort of life. Um, and so I wasn't updating or posting anything. And it definitely hit us to so our, you know, our, our stats and our numbers fell. But even there, you can actually repurpose old content. And I'll come to that later on where you might have content from before you can begin to share it again. You don't have to think, Oh, I don't have any content. And so my page is going to be dead. What one thing I always advise is to carry on engaging, be consistent. So if you post twice a week, let's let it be that twice a week, every week, if it's three times a day, let it be that as opposed to sometimes you post because you know, the numbers and the audience, they're not loyal. They just move on to the next person when you know, um, you're no longer present. And the, and the algorithm knows. So if you're not engaging as much, it doesn't show your post to people, um, at least for Instagram. So um, I hope that's clear. Can we move on to the next slide? Okay, so this is more around what I wanted to focus on. Um, and so please feel free to ask questions. Like I said, I see we have quite a few more people on. Um, so strategy. And I, you know, I use, I use this slide every time because I find that it's always so interesting. A lot of people use this strategy word now. Everyone is a social media strategist. Everybody works in strategy, but not, not a lot of people actually <laughs> know what it means or maybe they're not even strategists. So I, I define it or I, I say that, 
you know, when you have a good strategy in business, it helps you know what to prioritize. So it helps you know what to say yes or no to. You're clear about your journey. You know, you have your vision and your strategy is what takes you to that overall vision. And so along the way, you know, when something distracting comes, you know that you're going to say no to it because you're clear about that vision. You know what path you're using and going, um, going along. So, um, and one thing I put here was startups and businesses fail because they otherwise prioritize things that will not take them to that end goal. Exactly. So for example, if it's maybe cost cutting and you're focusing on technology or is it, um, you know, um, I don't know, a people issue, but you're focusing on your supply chain. It's always one thing or the other where you're avoiding the core and, and that typically is what the issue is. And so that's why businesses do fail. Sometimes, you know, it means that you, you're not, but you're not um, asking yourself the tough questions where maybe you might need to re-strategize the entire business. And so with that, then you keep having these losses or these challenges. So it's, it's really the same reason underlying across the board. So, yeah, so in the same vein, every segment of the business needs a strategy. Marketing needs its own strategy. Uh, and even social media within marketing um, requires its own strategy as well. Okay, so next slide, please. Um, so I'm going to ask if we can go to... Chichi, I'm going to crave your indulgence, actually. Can we please go to the slide? That, um, I think it might be slide 13. Well, the one that says social media strategy. We'll come back to this in a second, but I wanted to sort of get people to think about this. Yeah, thank you so much. So simple social media strategy. I want, I want us to begin to think through this. You might want to just write it down where you are, or I mean, like you, you have a copy of this anyway, so you might want to take a picture. But if you can, um, can you just think about your business or you or whatever you're embarking on with social media? And in creating this strategy, it's a mini strategy. What you need to ask yourself is, what are your social media objectives? So why are you going on social media? So for a nonprofit, is it to create awareness about this our um, mission? Is it to get funding? So you go on social media for different things. Everybody has a different reason. It's not always the same. Is it to drive sales? Is it for marketing? Is it to get investors? It's so different across the board. So maybe think about this for your business, for your entity, whatever. And the next question is, who is your target audience? So, um, you know, you can't just say, oh, it's Nigerians. You have to kind of drill down or say it's, you know, um, Americans in Austin. So, like, you know, what, what, what age, age group, um, you know, what demographic? Just, like, drill, drill down a little bit more. And it helps you as well because then it helps you de determine the type of content, the messaging that you create. But if you're not clear on who your target audience is, then that's, that's when, you know, your, your posts are not getting engagement and you're wondering why. So for us, we're clear. It's definitely entrepreneurs predominantly. And so a lot of our content is tailored to them. So when we bring things that are a little random, it's definitely random and we don't get the engagement that we need. So this all ties to your strategy. The third thing is what channels are you going to use? So um, before you even use social media channels, like just in general, how are you communicating with these people? Um, social media one way, is it email as well? You know, is it radio? Because it all ties in. Um, I have a client that I worked with. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know her, Nimi Akinkube. She uses radio. She uses um, email. She has a newsletter. She has events, in-person events. Um, she has social media. So her social media strategy is linked to all these things. So for example, if she's going to be on radio, there has to be content on a social media page. So it's that kind of thing. You have to be clear as to the channels you're going to use to engage. Um, and then the, the next thing is state your key message. And so for us, as an example, it's to empower entrepreneurs to build sustainable business. So everything that we create and put on there, even if it's sometimes humorous, which is actually good, you need to sort of be, you know, like be a little fun as well depending on your type of organization because you're socially engaging even that is tied to this whole sustainable business message right so you have to define what your key message is so i would Im Im implore is it the word implore all of you to to carry out this exercise and then the final question or last but not the least is um how would you manage these channels will it be you in person is it going to be an intern a volunteer is it going to be a social media manager or is it going to be a team if it's a large organization? So there are different people where you have to be clear 
because then you know that now influences the policy and the approval process, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, which I didn't include, there will be timelines, which then comes in your social media schedule and calendar and all of that. So um, maybe think through these um, and then you can, feel free to put them in the chat, chat if you want. And if you want someone to review it later, I'm definitely happy to. But just think through them and begin to develop your strategy, your mini strategy, one pager for your own business or entity. Okay, can we go back to the next few slides and then I'll speak to them. Thank you, Chichi. So Instagram was what I was focusing on. Yeah, the first one, exactly. So the reason why I brought these slides out, this, even though this is like late 2018 and so many things have changed since October, September, October 2018, it's unreal, is to show you the power of social media. Um, so these show you certain demographics uh, and I can guarantee you that the numbers have changed in the last three months or four months. Um, so Instagram has over a billion users, as we know. 80% of Instagram users are from outside the US. It's used predominantly by 38% women and, and less fewer men. That's in the US, but in, in Nigeria, that's the same. So maybe the numbers are not as far apart, but definitely, for example, our own um, spread is a little bit, it's more women than men. So that helps you think. So every statistic that I see or look at, I, I, I think, okay, how does this apply to my business? How does this you know, influence sort of what I'm doing? 59% of Instagram in, Instagrammers in the US are under 30, which is true. 32% of teenagers con consider it to be more, the most important social network. Um, and then there's a few things around uh, adults with Instagram accounts. Only 2% of Instagram users attended college. So if you're thinking, okay, it's only for the cerebral few, you know, the intellectuals, ab absolutely not. 2% of Instagram users make more than $75,000 per year. That's very good insight for you in terms of just buyer power, um, propensity to spend, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, next slide, please. Um, so again, it's crazy how, as at September, these statistics were accurate, but everything has changed. So after Instagram itself, Selena Gomez has the most followers. That's no longer true. It then became Kylie Jenner within months. And now it's the Instagram egg or the world egg. There's an egg post. I'm sure all of you have seen it or most of you, which is like the most liked picture or most liked account on Instagram it has the most, the highest number of followers. It was a ploy to sort of remove Kylie Jenner from number one position and it worked. And so this is the power of social media now where, you know, um, people have millions of followers. They have such strong buyer power. Um, if I think about a Kylie Jenner, she charges um, any brand a million dollars to put, put a single post up on her page. And it makes sense and it's phenomenal, but she can do that because she's a strong influencer, um, you know, if she sneezed and said we should all buy something, I can guarantee you at least 15% of her audience will go ahead and buy it. So it's just thinking about that when you think about your business. So yeah, Beyonce used to hold the record. <laughs> um, Instagram users like over 4.2 billion posts per day. Over 300 million people use Instagram stories daily. If you're not using Instagram stories, you should begin to use it. It's getting more and more engaging than, than the feed because... Um, the feed used to be good when there was no algorithm. You would see things in chronological order. You know, there wasn't things that were just disappearing. But now because of the algorithm, you have to leverage the feed a lot. And the feed allows, it's, it's quite very addictive for a lot of people because it's like a TV station. You see something and then it disappears. So you can post different types of content on there. You can have a quote, you can have a still, you can have a movable image, a video. There's a lot of things you can do. So if you're not using it, you should probably even use it more than your feed. I'm sure this is like news for some people, but even um, Instagram invited a few people to an event in Nigeria in November and they encouraged us to do the same. They gave us a whole, you know, like lecture around stories and movable images and all of that. So please begin to use it if you're not. Um, and there's a few other stats there. Video content is still on the rise. If you're not using video, you need to um, begin to use more video. Uh, more people are spending more time on Instagram with the help of stories, exactly. Because it's addictive. You're sitting there looking at what somebody's doing in real time. Um, it's definitely worth using. A lot of brands are using it more. Um, and if, you're, if you don't realize it, just check and then you, you see that, that that's the case. Okay, next slide, please. 
Okay, so now this is for business. I won't go through every specific um, um, statistic because you have this um, for later on, but I'll bring out that Instagram has 10x higher engagement than Facebook. So I know a lot of us on this platform probably use Facebook still, which is good and a lot more, but you should begin to consider something like Instagram as well. The reason why it has higher engagement is because I, I feel with Facebook, you have articles, you have music, video posts there's just a lot of things going on but i see instagram as very contained especially as a business if you're in the visual you know you have a visual type of business you can really share powerful images and video and content and people can engage so it's not that it's the most popular platform facebook is still the most popular platform but it has instagram has higher engagement so if you're looking for people to engage and interact with your posts and we want to gain quick insights or influence then i'd say definitely use instagram um, and for sales, 30% of users have purchased something on Instagram using their mobile device, especially in the U.S. and in the, in the West, right? People can purchase directly, less so in Nigeria, but that's becoming more the case. Um, brands post about five times per week. Um, there are tons of business profiles online. Um, brands post an Instagram story every month. To be honest, every week now, now they're realizing the power of it. Um, and then I'd say... The top right. So Instagram has over 2 million monthly adv active advertisers up from 1 million the previous year. And, I'm and, I, can, and I can bet you that I probably will have 4 million this year. So it's an exponential growth because of the, the impact on the turnaround. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so we've done this. Um, can we move to the next slide? Can we just pause at the, um, the strategy session, section, actually? Um, so has anyone actually done anything as i was speaking now i know i was talking a lot and speaking really fast but before i move on to the next has anyone um created their strategy as i was talking have they answered any of the questions you know like the social media objectives the target audience the channels if anyone has done that do you can you feel free to copy paste so we can maybe take a look if you're if you're if you're confident enough share with everyone i'd probably say that Now, I'm going to look at some questions now. Yeah, there's quite a few questions coming up. And I'll say, please um, feel free to ask questions. So people have questions about boosting, about the Nigerian marketplace. Okay, seeing some of them. Has anyone managed to do to answer any of these questions around their social media strategy? Okay, so we have Belinda. Excellent. So... So Belinda is saying that her objective on social media for her business is brand awareness. Great. So you're clear about that. So that means that everything you do must be tied to that in a way, even though it will be subtle, right? So I imagine that, okay, I don't know. I think you have a rental business or an event business, you know, so even when you share some of the previous work you've done, which is a good way to be able to create awareness, people can see your work better. So when they see it in video, so they can see that, okay, you know, it's not just, this is a real event, this is what they did, look at how pretty it is. You do rentals as well. Showing pictures of um, clients or even client testimonials is a good way. So, um, you know, um, clients written testimonials, clients video testimonials, if you can, if you have a product and the client has used it, why don't they share a testimonial? It's more relatable, it's more personal. And through that, you know, you get more loyalty and trust. So that's what you're trying to build there. Um, Ajayola says, her objective is to let people know about her brand and her business exactly. So um, again, so sharing content about what you're doing. But then apart from that, like I said, initially, you want to begin to educate as well. So if you're in the gifts business, you know, you have something that you want to share around gifts, maybe history, the historical fact. Um, there's something called infographics, and those are very useful because it's a good way for people to learn lots of information um, I'm sure some of you have seen it before. You're, you're welcome to Google it. Um, captured in a very graphically but aesthetically ap appealing way so that they are digesting a lot of information. Like maybe when they say, um, when, how did Zuckerberg start? And then you have like some kind of drawing and all of that. That's an in infographic. Um, okay. Um, someone has a question in regards to education. So I have someone who said some people want to speak. Okay. So I think we can allow them definitely um, speak in the last 
I think 20 minutes. How much time do we have? Because I wanted to give us about 20, 25 minutes. So can I just ask Kemi um, how, how much time? Um, you have about um, 25 minutes. Actually. 25, okay. So I'm going to wrap up in the next five and then we'll just open it to questions for people because I know that a lot of people are going to ask. Um, but can I just... Um, um, say that when you're asking a question, please share where you're from or where you're like just joining us from because I forgot to ask that initially. So, um, Chichi, can we go to the next slide? So, the appendix has a lot of hacks for you. Um, some of them may have even changed because, as you know, these things just leapfrog and evolve, but those are very useful hacks um, and it's, you know, it's free for you to have. So, definitely, um, you know, look at how you can engage more. Um, excellent strategies for you around Instagram. You can use some of them for Facebook and Twitter. So I'll say a thing or two about Facebook and Twitter. I don't believe you have to be on every single platform. It depends on your type of product or service or business, right? Um, so if you're a politician or a preacher, teacher, thought leader, then Twitter is actually quite good. Even Instagram, if you create quotes and all, but um, you don't have to be on everything. If you are an accountant and you provide services, yes, you can create some creative content using Instagram to engage, but you also want to be on LinkedIn, right? You don't just want to remain um, in a platform that doesn't benefit you. So you have to see what works for you, um, but you don't have to be on everything, especially as it's, it, every, every platform requires its own strategy. So it's actually tiring being able to deliver on each one across the board, unless you're an expert. Even for me, I struggle with doing my Twitter. I don't even use Facebook that much because I'm active on LinkedIn. I'm trying to do more on Twitter and I'm very active on Instagram. So um, just see what works for you and then do it really well. Okay, um, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so great. So we're, we're good for time and we're at the right um, point. So should I just read out some questions before we let people start asking um, in person? I have, I'm going to scroll up. Someone has said, how useful are the boost your ad functions on Facebook and Instagram? Are they useful tools to reach one's target audience in the Nigerian market space? They are. So as much as you do organic growth and organic, you know, awareness um, building, the boosting helps. And the problem is that Instagram and Facebook are trying to encourage more people to do that. That's why they keep changing the algorithm. So you would need to actually pay to get people to see your posts more, which is a bit annoying. But definitely, yes. So even if you spend a few dollars, a dollar a day, two dollars a day or whatever, for maybe like five, six, seven, you know, two weeks, um, and then just sharing content and um, selecting the type of demographic that you are trying to reach, and then you can begin to share um, um, boost your post that way. One thing I learned about boosting, I don't use it very much. In fact, I've only used it twice, is when you put a post with too much writing, it doesn't accept it. So sometimes the platform just wouldn't accept your advert and then it wouldn't share it. So you have to look at the guidelines very closely. Um, it's still trying to figure out the Nigerian marketplace, but people use it and I see people's adverts. So if I do see people's adverts, then I'll say definitely use it. But I will encourage you to always... Um, select demographics. So if it's people in Ikoi or VI within like five uh, miles or 10 miles or five to seven miles and do that as opposed to just saying Lagos because then it's going to show someone in Okoba, someone in uh, Ipe. Do you see what I mean? So make it a bit more specific in terms of the, the radius. Okay. Um, question. So Ajela has a question about education. So we'll get you to ask that. Okay, you've written it. How soon should education be part of the objective? Ajela from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Ajela, long time. So education should definitely come into your, may not be your object, if it's your objective all well and good, it means you have to be very intentional about a lot of content around um, um, education. And the good thing with internet now is there's just so much around anything really, even hashtags, if you search under a hashtag, you can find a lot of information around shoes, around dry cleaning, anything. So um, I would say definitely, Education should be part of it right from the get-go. Even if you're not even, even if you're selling, include education as part of your strategy. It definitely works for you because people just see you as, okay, she knows what she's talking about. She's probably an expert, right? So let's go to her page. Let's learn. Someone, a dry cleaning business had this whole infographic around the type of heels versus what outfits you would wear with a type of um, heel shoes. So they had like eight different types of heels. And I saved it because me, I had never seen it before. It's something I wanted to know. You know, and I engage, and I know that that page, I always go there because they share interesting, informative stuff. So I'll say include education because it allows people to trust your brand more. 
Okay, scrolling down very quickly. Um, yes, there will be a replay. I think there's, the, the webinar is being recorded. Um, yeah, so can we get people to ask in person now? I'm happy to have people ask questions. As in like proper ask without typing, you can ask. So I think um, I think you can raise your hand. There should be a way for you to for the participants to raise their hands, and then Chichi can unmute them. Okay. Right. Um, oh, I see. Okay. So Chichi, if you want to unmute, I think Adela has raised her hand. Adela, go ahead. Hi. Thank you very Hi. much for this um for this webinar. I almost missed it. Oh. But thank you, and I appreciate this. It's it's been very informative. Thank um, you. I would say I'm not, I'm not a social media person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not my thing, but I've been trying I have an event planning business that I've been trying my best to get on the platform. Basically mine has been more of um, word of mouth, but as you know, word of mouth is not, uh, is not enough because you, you have to fill it in the pockets in order to be like a full-time full-blown mm -hmm. event planner. Um, and social media seems to be taking, you know, the cake. And I'm trying to figure out um, how do you even, like, where do you start? From? I mean, I put post stuff there. Do we have to, can we post and not put comments? I know you say hashtags. Okay. Where can we help get help with hashtag and stuff okay. like that? Because it, okay. it gets very, for someone like me that's so um, straight to the point and cut short, it's like, where do I get hash hashtags from? Mm. Where do I even start? That's a good question. Yeah. That's a very good question. Thank you, Adjola. So first of all, I wouldn't encourage you to post anything without a caption. I, I want people to stop doing that, especially businesses. You have to have a message. Like they talk about storytelling. It's not about writing an epistle. It's just about sharing something with regards to what you're posting. So you have a picture of a basket of gifts or whatever. You can have maybe like how you're inspired to arrange the gifts you know, or even like the whole journey of like putting everything together or sourcing them. There's always something to say. And it doesn't have to be so personal. Some people are private, so they worry that they don't want to have all their information out there. But if it's your business, you can literally personalize it in a way that people can relate to the business. Everybody mm -hmm. can relate to the stress of buying or sourcing. And so you want to begin to share things like that. And I know that everyone is not necessarily gifted to be a storyteller, but you can put something, you can append something. So that's the first thing second thing is so with hashtags there's a lot of resources now um online if you just type in hashtags for event planning hashtags for chefs you find even like nigeria specific hashtags you can find pages that have that the thing with hashtags is they used to work so well before the algorithm on at least on instagram where you use 30 hashtag on your guarantee to get more likes but now it's hit or miss you can use one hashtag but if your post is powerful enough you can get like tons of likes versus the one that has 40 hashtags so with Instagram, you're only allowed 30. And I'll say, yeah, so use between one to 30, but definitely use one. For example, your brand name should have its own hashtag, right? So like Niger Startups, anything I post, at least I have my Niger Startups hashtag on it. Um, and then the thing with hashtags is if you use very common ones like love or family, your post will just get lost because so many people are posting um, content with that hashtag in, a, in any mm -hmm. second. So okay. you want to find a balance um, where you're posting and using hashtags, but it's not like overly common ones. And then they're the ones where people spam because you know that everyone uses. So you click on it, there's a lot of like adult content. So it's literally just like trying and playing around. You can start with like five or eight or 10 and then just see how you get on. Even with your hashtags, you begin to see how people are coming to your page. Because for me, I have alerts on some hashtags. So if someone puts anything around woman empowerment, I see it in my feed and I go and like it. So it's the same way you like women empowerment. You might have some people come from different places to come and like your post that didn't normally like your post before. So that's the beauty about hashtags where it's about finding the balance. I, I have another question if you don't mind. Okay. Um, so in regards to posting, like maybe to, you know, the um, consistency in posting weekly posts, I, 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 I'm not sure if you mentioned or something. I don't know if where I heard that there, there were like different, um, 
we have different apps that there are apps that you can use to post mm -hmm. so schedule your posts mm -hmm. do you by any chance like maybe have like um what's called ideas and stuff like that i, yeah. I don't know if you that just mentioned no, no, no. that's the right question so mm -hmm. there are um two apps that i know of called buffer and hootsuite h-o-o-t-e tweets as in s-u-i-t-e and then buffer as in b-u-f-f-e-r okay. so you can schedule posts so that then you can go to sleep and then it just kind of posts at the, at the agreed time okay now, there are two things i don't know if instagram still allows you to schedule posts from what i know from my team anyway they were saying mm. something about how you can't schedule posts on instagram anymore it's trying to discourage that another challenge is you might schedule a post and not remember to check it and it might not speak to something for example a bank or some bank in kenya um mm -hmm. scheduled, sorry it was a drinks brand alcoholic drinks brand scheduled a post and then it was the day of shooting or whatever and the mm. message that they shared was very conflicting as to the day and everything happening oh, okay. so the challenge is okay just making sure that you have a checking mechanism to make sure that even when you schedule post or maybe each week you know what's being shared because you don't want to schedule something that is just off when you're when you didn't remember but i know that you can schedule for twitter maybe for facebook we don't use it because we just like to post organically so i know it's okay. harder but um just check it out and see but before okay. you could definitely schedule posts for all platforms on okay. Buff or Hootsuite. sorry i have one more question <laughs> what, so, is what is the best time in your in your opinion to, mm -hmm. to share a post so it varies from business to business okay. um, and the best way to know yours is to look at your insights so the first thing is all of you who have businesses on social media should make sure you have business accounts, don't have personal accounts and think that you can get your analytics. You won't be able to get anything, but if you convert your page to a business page, which you can do easily, then you can begin to now measure and say, okay, how many likes, how many people shared this post? How many people saved this post? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people actually save the post. They don't like it. They will save it. Sometimes they'll have like 200 people have saved it because they like it so much, but they don't want to like it. Do you see what okay. I mean? Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's something to think about. Um, Thank you, Adela. Thank you so much. And, you know, we'll move to the next question. And if you have questions, I know we only have a few minutes to go. Please just post your questions. We just want to add one question per person, right? <laughs> so that we can get to the others. Thank you so much. We really, we know this is a hot topic. <laughs> I know. Well, that's a good question. And I'm sure it's good for everyone as well. There's no specific time to post. Um, you have to to just look at your own audience um typically the morning is always good for most people if you want to share something really impactful or inspirational because it's when they first wake up but it really varies sorry i couldn't see the chat window so i was a bit confused but it's back now okay Hi. So, Hi, Theodora. um feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question so theodora should i answer hers or wait she's asked She's planning to launch a small service business, which will be starting from the city. How can social media be of help to attract feed neighborhood business? So that's why I think I was saying to Ajola that, um, and I think I was almost saying that the beauty about social media is people from outside the city can then, outside where you're based, know about your business. So it's not only about word of mouth and people you know around you. But with social media, then you can get invited to come and run a service in another city, in another country. In fact, now I get invited to speak in places I never thought I would go. Some of them I'd had to even turn down, maybe because of timing or location, like Port um, Okay, I've been to Port Harcourt. I think it was um, somewhere in Delta States to speak at, a, at an event, only because they saw the work that I had been doing on social media. So I encourage you to share things on social media, you know, and so people can know about you. And then the more hashtags you use, or even locations, wherever you are with your post, try and put a location. It doesn't have to be your specific location, maybe for safety reasons. Some people don't want to do that. You can put like, you know, um, Maryland, or you put like, you know, I don't know, Walgreens, like, you know, like just somewhere specific. Or if you're in a, in a place that, you know, people tend to go to, um, you can put that location or like, okay, I'll think about random, like MoMA in New York or something. So if anybody now clicks on MoMA, you know, then they can see all the posts that were posted within the moment. And then your post then comes up. And so then they go to your page. So it's that kind of thinking that you use for your location. But it's always good to put a location. It doesn't have to be specific, like your home address or anything like that. Okay. Any more questions? Hilda has one, right? Hilda is next. Yes. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, good morning or good afternoon. Thank you so much, Aramide, Day, for this session. This is very, very helpful. Um, this is Hilda from Maryland. Hi. And yeah, hi. My question. So I have an event planning business okay. and I'm also starting an educational consultant business oh, wow. which my target audience in Nigeria. So students, undergraduates and graduate students in Nigeria. Okay. So social media is something that it takes me forever to just even get one post right. <laughs> and like it's kind of gone off. Is that Hilda, can you hear me now? Okay, I can hear you. Yeah, now. yeah. I was saying that um, considering the multiple things I have going on in my um, destination event planning business and the consulting, educational consulting, I'm, I'm looking to start as well as the not for profit that goes with that uh, too. Okay. Is it best to just hire um, a social media like company that can help, um, even if it's just for a couple months? Because I just feel like. If I feel like I say I'm going to commit to it, then I'm not going to be consistent. And everything that you talk about in terms of being consistent, mm -hmm. having a strategy, um, time posts and things like that, I won't be able to deliver mm -hmm. because I'm behind building content. Right. But I just need someone that can handle like the whole administrative part of it, the design part of it and all of that. Post. So is it helpful is, I mean, to hire someone that can do all of that piece? And how long um, should you, reconsidering that the business is just kicking off, like there are no profits yet. So what's yeah. that balance? Okay, that's a very good question. In fact, that's the million dollar question for most business owners, where you have, you have to do the actual job as well, not to talk of, you know, creating content for the job, you know. So it's, okay, how do you find that balance? There's nothing wrong with outsourcing to an agency if you can afford it and your budget allows for it. But then, of course, the costs are attached to it. So if you're going to go to an agency at all, you need to have, you know, look at their track record. What have they done? What are they, who are they currently working for? You know, what is the timeline? Have like some specific objectives, you know. It's not about, okay, like 5 million followers by X period, but just like more specific objectives and see if they really understand your audience. But one other way is to get an intern. So maybe someone who is... um good with graphics, good with social media, and then you can guide them, right? So it's like a hybrid of the two where you're not totally removed from the process and then you're like working with them to create content, but then they're the ones really handling it, or doing the actual administrative, creating the design, doing the posting, and you're reviewing and approving. Then at least as a small business, you can cut your costs, but then you have insight as well. So, but then it's still the organic approach. The thing with agencies is sometimes you even use them and you don't get the required, the expected um, results so it's it's a bit of it's a bit of both but if you really don't have time you might need to get someone to do it just to you know like move things ahead so hope that answers awesome okay. we have one uh, time for one more question i believe belinda asked a question earlier her question was what benefit is there to liking the posts of people who like your posts or reciprocal liking especially if their business is unrelated? Great question, Belinda. Thank Belinda you. is a professor in social media. <laughs> no, it's a good question. Um, so I think the beauty about social media is you have, it's social. So as much as you want people to come to your own page, you need to also do some going around, do some engagement as well, commenting, liking. It doesn't have to be a whole like for like agenda. I don't really... I don't really know about that, but like definitely like people's posts, engage, let people see that you're visible on there. And in fact, that's how people find you when they just see a name or something. Some people just out of interest or being nosy, they click on your handle and, and so on and so forth. So um, be social, right? Don't just be static as a business. Um, and that's the use of social media as well. Um, and then, yeah, so there's people who like, that whole reciprocity is always good because, um, you know, people just feel appreciated. One way to engage with people is to appreciate them. So appreciate your customers, have your employee of the week or your customer of the week or follower of the week, feature them. It's very powerful. Even Mary Kay would tell you appreciation. It's, it's beautiful. Everyone likes to be appreciated any level, even in church. Do you see what I mean? So there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it as a business on social media. Okay, someone wants me to share recommendations. So we'll do, we'll definitely do. I'll share my email with everyone. So my email, you can ask me questions there, is aramide at nijastartups.co. And thank you. So wait for 
the final wrap up. Awesome. Um, ladies, if there's any more questions, or maybe I don't know if you have time maybe after the session is officially over, if more ladies have questions, we certainly don't want to um, shorten the engagement. The engagement has been so powerful. Um, mm -hmm. But with that, I think it speaks to the power of the content um, and also just the, the power and the engagement within the session itself. So thank you so much for you. Um, the powerful content. Um, and yeah, that will be available to over email. Absolutely. Thank yes. you. Yes. And ladies, um, thank you again for joining us. One thing that we did promise and one thing that we did uh, mention earlier as part of our engagement with you was we wanted to make sure that people found out about this session. Um, there are so many competing interests. It's a Saturday afternoon um, for most of us. And so one thing we did want to do is to make sure that we are saying thank you to you. So um, as promised, we had a special giveaway that we announced. So if you could just really, really quickly, um, just post in the chat box who invited you to this seminar. Um, if you're new to EPR, you know, who invited you to this session? Who invited you to EPR? And even if you're a returning EPR member and someone, you know, reminded you or whatever the case was, um, just kind of post and we want to be able to empower you. EPR invited you. Awesome. Um, if you have a specific name, just so that we don't have to <laughs> yeah. um, Pastor Nike, awesome, awesome. And um, just as more of the names come in, we want to say thank you so much. And we want to share a little bit about EPR. Um, EPR is a network of women. Primarily, it's a ministry where we gather to pray, to, um, to encourage one another, to empower one another. Um, and this is just one of the many ways that we serve um, the community, we serve um, our networks and we serve each other. We, um, we talk about specific topics and we try and bring in experts um, like Aramide who can speak powerfully on the topic. So um, if you enjoyed this at all, we are definitely going to engage after this session and share more about who we are and what we do. Um, and what, one thing that I love about EPR is that it is a global network. Um, mm -hmm. We are able to communicate in real time and we are able to um, really form a community um, across so many different um, so many different locations. Aramide is currently in London. We have people in Nigeria. We have people in Canada, and we're still able to meet and speak to matters that matter to us. Um, so, with that, um, I am looking through. Currently, we have Pastor Nike. Um, but I don't think she can win. Um, so one thing that we will do is that we will actually have a drawing. So there is, um, there was a clear winner, but she is actually the person who started EPR. Um, so we're just going to have a drawing. If you signed up, if you registered, we have your emails. What we will do is we will have a random drawing and we will certainly email you, but we want to show you what you will be winning. And um, what you will be winning is a book. So we asked Aramide, what is the one thing that people <laughs> can walk away from this session? Um, yeah. What is the one thing that we can empower the ladies after the session to go and follow up and learn? And she recommended this awesome book. Um, <laughs> if you haven't heard of Gary, you, you should know of Gary. He's one of the many voices in the, the ongoing conversation about engagement um, and making sure that businesses have everything that they need to leverage um, their network. So we are going to send this book to you. And again, to accommodate different styles, people like reading, people like listening to their books. So um, whoever the, the winner is, basically, you can let us know if you would like the paper copy, the physical copy, or um, audiobook through Audible. And with that, we want to make sure to um, just wrap up. And, and, and one thing we want to do, right, sessions like this are amazing. Um, and we want to thank Aramide again for her time. Thank we you. want you to think about and write down the one thing, the one action that you are going to take within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, engagement even starts now. You know, we engage the topic even after the session is over. What is the one thing that you can do, whether it's thinking about a social media company, maybe it's following up effectively with the speaker. I know there are times that we go to seminars and we say, oh, I'm, I'm definitely going to email the speaker and we never do it. Um, what is the one thing that we can do? Is it writing down that social media strategy? We're going to send out the recording. 
you know, yeah. is it watching the recording? What is the one thing that you can do within the next 24 to 48 hours to make sure that this content is beneficial and is value added to you, your business, and your network? Um, so while you do that, we, we want to go ahead and launch a poll. We want to always hear how we're doing. We want to hear how the session was for you. Um, and so we're just going to launch this two minute poll. It probably will even take less time. And we just wanna get your feedback on how this session was. So I will go ahead and launch it and we'll take about one to two minutes to give everyone a chance to respond. somebody we have some people still cooking <laughs> as many who can respond we we really do meet and we talk about your responses we we share um we troubleshoot we improve we mm -hmm. and one thing that we do also want to ask is after this poll is over we will have a chance to find out from you what topics we can tackle in the upcoming months so definitely stick around to share your feedback on that. So about half have voted already. If you can just click the poll, there are literally three questions and it's just uh, tap your responses. So it does not take very long at all. We'll give about 30 more seconds for the poll. So someone asked, how do I get to the poll? So it should already um, pop up, but if it's not popping up for you, go ahead and click the bottom, um, you know, there's a tab for Zoom. So if you tap your screen or um, just kind of scroll down a little bit, you should see where you can raise your hand and there should be the poll. Just go ahead and click the poll and you should be able to see the poll. Thanks for asking that question. We'll give maybe 20 more seconds to make sure everyone has voted. And if you have finished with the poll, one thing that you can go ahead and do is you can post in the chat box anything that you would like us to talk about in future seminars. Um, we have the April seminar set already. We're going to talk about networking. So we talked a little bit about social media networking today and social media engagement, leveraging social media for your brand. We definitely want to take it a step further and talk about networking, in-person networking, making sure that you, your brand, your message is memorable in person as well as social media. So um, definitely go ahead and post in the chat box if you have any topics that you want us to discuss in future webinars. Awesome. So I will um, leave the poll open, but one thing that I do want to share are two quotes from two authors that you can follow up on. And one of the quotes is, is basically, bring the best of your authentic self to every opportunity. And that's something that Aramide has taught us today, and even with the case study of Niger startups, you know, understanding what her key message was and showing that authentically to her audience, I think that was the game changer for her brand um, and her company, and she continues to do that every day. And the final quote is, is, um, is really a, a quote about really the reality of where social media is, which is that conversations are happening, whether you are there or not. So why not join the conversation? Why not um, use the tools that we've learned today to really get the edge on what your message should be and what your brand should be saying? And with that, we just wanna say thank you. Um, please save the date for the next session. That's in April. And again, thank you so much to our remedy. And it was fun. Awesome, awesome. If there are any more questions, we will go ahead 
um, and take maybe one or two more questions if anyone has any more questions. Any final questions? Awesome. Any last words, Aramide? Um, good point. <laughs> okay, so I think a lot of us shy away from just being present or visible. But the, I heard a lady say once that the only person that can really tell your story is you. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with sharing what you're doing because that's the only way you can promote yourself. Mm. I think a lot of us, especially maybe us with African descent, are not very we're conservative, so we don't toot our own horns. Maybe in America, that mindset helps us change. Or us maybe that grew up in the UK, we, do, we, we find it hard to toot our own horns because it's kind of like outlandish. But that's what we need to do because we need to tell our own stories. We need to share what we're doing. That's the only way you get more business, more referrals, more interest. People see what you're doing. And so when I realized that I started becoming more comfortable and confident to do that, and through that, I've got more opportunities. So I would like to encourage you that don't, don't think of anything as silly or so simple to share. People will pay for the information that you know. So when you think about it that way, hopefully you'll be able to share more and engage more and educate people on, what, on the knowledge you have as well because I probably didn't even think this was worth teaching, to be honest. But hey, here we are. So um, I encourage you to do the same. Wow, amazing. Thank you all so much. And we will send out the recording. God bless you, Aramide. Have a Thank great you. rest of your time in London. Thank bye you. Bye. I'm watching you, Stacey. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.